Hello everybody. In this video we're going to talk about another one of the basic gas laws and in this video we're going to talk about Charles's law. So over here is a picture of J.A.C. Charles, the guy who came up with this law. And on the right side of your screen there is a picture of a hot air balloon. And Charles's law explains why hot air balloons work and the relationships between properties of gases that allow a hot air balloon to work. So remember we have four basic properties of gases which are the pressure P, the volume V, the temperature T and the amount in moles N. And Charles's law governs the behavior of the volume of a gas related to its temperature. So Charles's law governs the relationship between the volume and the temperature of a gas if the pressure of the gas and the amount in moles of the gas are kept constant. So again, we're looking at the relationship between volume and temperature and we're making the assumption that pressure and amount are kept constant. And so this is a picture of J.A.C. Charles right here. So what he did was he carefully, carefully studied the relationships between uh, the volume of a gas and the gas's temperature. And interestingly enough, J.A.C. Charles was actually one of the first people to ascend and take flight in a hydrogen-filled balloon. So this is an artist rendition of uh, one of J.A.C. Charles's balloons that he actually traveled in himself. So he was kind of a, a pioneer and he loved to, to take flight uh, with these balloons, studying these gases and, and whatnot. So what J.A.C. Charles found when he made these uh, careful measurements and studied, carefully studying these relationships is that the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas. And again, this is all assuming that the pressure and the amount are kept constant. So this little symbol over here means that the volume is directly proportional to the temperature. So what that means is as the volume increases, the temperature increases. As the temperature increases, the volume is going to increase. As the temperature decreases, the volume is also going to decrease. So we can rearrange this proportionality. We can turn it into an equation by saying that the volume is simply equal to the temperature of the gas multiplied by some constant. And then uh, finally, dividing both sides of this equation by the temperature gives us this important result, which is that uh, the volume divided by the temperature of the gas is equal to a constant. So that means if you have two conditions, so let's say you have one condition where you have a very low temperature gas that's at a very small volume, and you keep the pressure constant, you keep the amount constant, and then eventually you heat it up and that causes the gas to expand and you have this expanded hot gas state. Well those states are related by this equation here. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 where V1 and T1 are the volume and temperature of the gas in the, well let's just say it's in the um, in the compressed cold state and then V2 and T2 could be the volume and temperature of the gas when it's in that expanded hot state. And you can actually study this relationship yourself with a couple of uh, easy to find items. Uh, so for, if you take a balloon for instance, so you have an ordinary balloon and, it, and you partially inflate it so you blow it up with just a little bit of air so it's not too full but it still has some air in it. What you, would, what you could do is you could hold that balloon uh, over a flame or some other substance that's really, really hot. And you'll find that that balloon is going to expand. It's going to increase in volume. So it increases in volume because that's the direct relationship between the volume and the temperature. So when you increase the temperature, you're going to increase that volume proportionally. And the reason why this happens is because, again, you're keeping that pressure constant. And if you're heating up those gas, those gas particles have a lot more kinetic energy. They're moving around. They want to collide into themselves more. Chances are they're going to bump into the walls of that balloon even more. And the only way for the pressure to stay constant throughout this process is for that balloon to expand and allow that gas to occupy a larger volume. On the flip side, if you were to take a balloon and drop it into a bucket of ice water, uh, you'll notice that that balloon is going to start compressing. It's going to get smaller and smaller. So again, all, this is all related to Charles's law. As the temperature increases, the volume increases. As the temperature decreases, the volume decreases. So, and, and Charles's law basically explains why hot air balloons work. It explains why heat rises. And the reason why heat rises is because when air gets hot, according to Charles's law, that hot air is going to occupy a larger volume because of that relationship between volume and temperature. Well, since that 
air has now uh, reached a much hotter temperature, uh, that means it's occupying a larger volume, and since it has the same mass, it's going to have a lower density. So that hotter air is actually less dense than the colder air because it's occupying a much larger volume. And as we know by now, things with low densities tend to float on top of things with high densities. So this is why hot air rises above the denser, colder air located below. So this is why the second floor of a house is usually much warmer uh, than the first floor because all that hot air with that low density has risen up on the second floor of that house. So one more thing we're going to do before we end this video is to do a problem. So this problem says that you have a balloon at room temperature and we're going to assume that to be 21.00 degrees Celsius and this balloon has a volume of 2.00 liters. It says that the balloon is cooled and consequently is compressed to a final volume of 0 0.100 liters. And we are asked to find the temperature of that newly compressed balloon. So again, we're going to use our V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And so plugging all those uh, values in gives us 2.00 liters over, and this is interesting, I wanted to point this out, instead of writing 21.00 degrees Celsius, I have converted that into kelvins. So remember, to go from Celsius to Kelvin, all you have to do is add 273.15, and we get 294.15 kelvins for our temperature. Remember, when you're working with gas laws, you always want to use temperatures in kelvins, not in degrees Celsius, okay? And the reason why is, let's say you go from 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. Well, you're not really doubling the temperature because the Celsius is a relative scale. You want to use an absolute scale, okay, which is Kelvin. Okay, so always convert your temperatures to Kelvins when you're doing equations with gas laws. So again, we're going to assume that the room temperature uh, warmer balloon uh, is V1 and T1. So that's what, why we have the 2 liters up here and the 294.15 kelvins down here. And then we're going to assume that V2 and T2 uh, correspond to the gas when it's in that colder compressed state. And so that's why we have the volume 0 0.100 liters divided by our unknown value which is T2. And all we have to do to solve this equation is just a little bit of algebra. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 294.15 Kelvin and we're also going to divide both sides of the equation uh, by 2.00 liters and that's going to give us this over here. That's going to give us that T2 is equal to 294.15 Kelvins times 0 0.100 liters divided by 2.00 liters. The liters are obviously going to cancel and when we plug this into our calculator we're going to keep our answer to three significant figures and that final temperature becomes 14.7 kelvins. And of course if we wanted to convert that into degree, to degrees Celsius we could. All we would have to do is subtract our temperature in kelvins by 273.15 uh, degrees. So I hope this video helped you out a little bit. Uh, just pretty easy um, just understanding that at, as the temperature increases the volume also increases and then just being able to use algebra uh, to solve for an unknown value uh, in this case a temperature. So uh, in the next video we're going to talk about another another uh, one of the gas laws and I can't wait to do that. So all right there it is take it easy.